if you want to get a bit of guidance on how to pray over these next couple of weeks, if you go onto our website and under the resources section, there's a little tab there called Eco Church, and it describes some of the stuff that we're doing here at St. Peter's to help in terms of climate change, but also um, there's a little COP uh, link there, and it's talking about the conference and different things going on in the different weeks, and specifically how to pray into this next week. So there's a great little bit of guidance. It just helps us as we come before God and as we pray about these things, because part um, of what it means to play our part in bringing heaven to southeast London and to wherever we are, our world that we live in, is to engage in this stuff. And, and likewise, you'll know we speak a lot here, um, or have been speaking a lot about our response to racism, particularly because of the conversation of the last couple of years. And you'll know that I said that I'd regularly update us all as a church on this matter. So I'm going to do so this morning, but just to put it in the bigger picture of the vision here at St. Peter's, we want a church family here where everybody feels welcome from every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every language. They come in through the doors of our church and they feel at home and they feel instantly a part of the church family here. And we have a beautifully diverse church here at St. Peter's, so we have a brilliant opportunity to see heaven come in this way. And we also live, don't we, in a beautifully diverse part of London as well. And as we engage more with our community, we've got a brilliant opportunity to see heaven in and through our response to racism, particularly over the conversation of the last couple of years. But as we've been reflecting on this, you'll know that we have identified a number of key barriers that as a church we want to overcome and we want to bring down so that that is more of a reality here at St. Peter's. And you would have heard me talk about us grouping our response to racism into, into three different areas at St. Peter's. So Ashlyn, do you mind just sticking that slide up? that I've sent in. Um, this slide kind of identifies the three different areas. I'm just going to briefly update everybody where we're at on each of these three areas. So firstly, leadership in the church. Um, you would have heard me speak last time about wardens and PCC. The last time I updated us on this, we were about to have our APCM, which is just where we vote in our new PCC members. Now, PCC members are a bit like a board of trustees in a charity. It's representation of our community and a part of the decision-making process here at St. Peter's. And we had the APCM. Um, I know those that came absolutely enjoyed it. We tried to keep it as short as possible, the APCM. So you're all very welcome to come to it. And then we have Prosecco at the end to cheers what God's doing in our church. It's really good fun. But anyway, we now have much better representation with our wardens and with our PCC. Five out of the 12 elected members are now black and ethnic minority church family members. So that is absolutely brilliant. That's already making a huge difference on our PCC. And we discussed substantive stuff with the PCC. So the last time we met, we talked about how we're going to do church planting or church grafting or how we're going to see us take what we have here out into Southeast London, into our communities. This next PCC meeting, we're talking about discipleship. We don't want us to just come out of the pandemic and then just go on with church as normal as we always did, having this big focus on a Sunday event. We want it to be about discipleship, being with Jesus, being like Jesus, doing the things that he did, helping one another do the same, doing that Monday to Saturday, not just on Sunday at an event. And so we're discussing this with the PCC and getting a brilliant range of opinions on how we actually do that as a church. So that's Warden and PCC staff as well. You'll know that we um, are looking for better representation on our staff team. The last couple of roles, uh, we've appointed black and ethnic minority applicants, and that's been really encouraging, and it's part of being intentional in terms of how we advertise job roles here at St. Peter's. We realized that we were just using the, the channels of advertising that we'd always used, and really that just tapped into white majority churches, particularly in the New Wine Network and that sort of thing. So we're being more intentional about we have how we advertise these roles now and asking people to apply. Um, just really quickly, so that there's a new job coming up um, that uh, we'd love you to get the word out about. Many of you will know Gabby. She's been um, working with the youth for the last six months. Now, Gabby is an incredible youth leader, but unfortunately, she's also the worship leader of a church called Holy Trinity up in Forest Hill. And we don't want to take her away from that, but it means that she's not able to be here Sunday morning. And so she's been amazing at kind of organizing the volunteers over the last six months for youth. But we'd love a youth leader who can be here Sunday mornings. So we're going to put the job advert out this week. In fact, it's already up. So you can go onto the website, go to vacancy 
is please, please, please start thinking, praying about people who might be uh, interested and who can apply for that and start getting the word out. We'd love to have a brilliant range of applicants for that. All details are on the website. Village leaders and congregational-led ministries as well. We've been very intentional in terms of reputation there, um, and villages continue to thrive. If you're here and you've joined this church over lockdown, you've not managed to find a village. Our villages are basically our midweek, mid-sized communities, really where church properly happens, where discipleship really happens, because it's too big here on Sundays, and it's too transient, but during the week, you can really get to know fewer people really well. If you're struggling to get into one of those, please come and talk to us. We'd love to help you with that. Another thing that we're really passionate about is that it isn't just as a staff team, us thinking up ministries and then putting them on and then expecting you as a congregation to come and serve them and get involved. We'd much rather this operate, our church operate like a body. And so therefore ministries and stuff comes up from you guys as the congregation. And then we get behind you and we support what it is that you feel like you're called to do in terms of the kingdom in southeast London. And the last two ministries, congregational-led ministries that have come up out of the church have been from black and ethnic minority members of our church, which is amazing. And we want to encourage more and more of that. So if you have an idea of something that you feel like God is calling you to do, so you feel like God's saying, this is the area of the kingdom I want you to pioneer, I want you to bring mission into. Please come and speak to us. Um, you can email Chris, Chris Gould. Are you here, Chris? He's, he's gone out, he's doing youth. Um, Chris at stpetersbroccoli.org.uk. And he would love to just hear your heart for what it is you feel like God's calling you to do. And then we'd love to, as a staff team, get behind you and resource you and help you with that. So that's one way that it's better represented in terms of our church. Worship team. Oh, no, gosh, no, I've skipped on there, sorry. Um, secondly, Sundays. So that's leadership, and we need to continue doing more and more in terms of our leadership. Secondly, Sundays. When I say Sundays, what we're really talking about here is stuff that happens on stage and as I've said before, we're incredibly blessed with some amazing leaders from our black and minority ethnic church family and we need to continue encouraging people as they come up and speak. I'm going to be running a speaking and teaching workshop for anybody who feels like God might have called them to speak or teach in any church context, whether that's speaking on Sunday, whether that's in small groups or any other way. Can you please come and speak to me? And I'd love to have you on that speaking workshop. I'm just going to help you as you start to think through that gifting in terms of teaching and preaching, but also leading services and leading small groups as well. I'd love to help you with that. Um, one area we'd still love better representation is on our worship team. Um, Lucy is putting together a community choir for Christmas, and we've had loads of people uh, become a part of that, over 30 people, and it's beautifully diverse, actually. It's going to be brilliant. But what we'd love to see is more of those people in that choir start to filter into our worship band on Sundays. We'd love better representation on our worship team. Um, and so if you are here and you're part of our church family and you're um, part of our black and ethnic minority church family, we'd love you to come and audition, either to sing or to play an instrument and be a part of the worship team. Please do come and speak to Lucy or just email Lucy at stpetersbroccoli.org.uk and we'd love to chat to you. Um, finally, culture. Now, the culture part of this, you, this is kind of the intangibles, really. This is what it feels like. If you're from um, a different culture or a different ethnic minority uh, and you come in through the doors, it's how you feel when you come in. Do you feel at home when you come in? Do you feel like you can be a part of this community, that you can contribute to this community? So it's a little bit more intangible, this area, but we've been working very hard on a few different areas. Many of you will have met Mags. She's in the kitchen right now cooking for the newcomer's lunch, but you will know Mags probably because she's tried to recruit you for the welcome team, because this starts on the welcome team. As soon as people come through the door, we want a brilliant representation of our church and of our local area on the welcome team. And so welcome is incredibly important in this area, making everybody feel at home as soon as they come in. But we're gonna start to try and think about better ways to get better representation on team, but just lots of things that they seem trivial in and of themselves, but when they add up, it adds to the culture of the church. For example, not just having croissants when people come in for the breakfast. Do you see what I mean? It sounds trivial when you talk about having a range of different foods from um, different cultures, but it's those intangibles that add up and they start to create this feeling of everybody being at home. So we've got the welcome team. Nita also, she's speaking this morning, but she's very kindly come on staff for half a day a week. She's coming along to our staff meeting. She's going to do an audit on this sort of area of our church, of the culture of our church. She's going to feed back to the PCC and feedback to the staff team as well. So do be praying for her as she 
does that, one thing that she's really passionate about is that we start inviting lots of different people around for dinner at our houses because this is really important. It's a key part of our church ministry. So not just inviting people who look like us and think like us and act like us, but inviting lots of different people around for dinner so that we start creating this beautiful sense of church family here at St. Peter's. So do be encouraging you to do that. Anita will speak more about that, I'm sure in the future. And then finally, we talked about a course, didn't we? So as to help continue the conversation on, help continue the education, but also start to help us put this in the context of worship and ministry. Now, we struggled to find a course to do because most of them are American, um, and a lot of it is referencing historical references in America. We'd love something that's a bit more UK-based. We actually think we found one called the Mirrors Course, which has been written very recently by a friend of ours, and she's doing it for the first time at the moment. So we've contacted her, and hopefully she'll be able to run it here at St. Peter's as well. So listen out for that. It's called the Mirrors Course, and we're going to be getting her to facilitate it here, hopefully. Um, so just to say, um, there's always a danger when we talk about this sort of thing, that some of the stuff I say feels like tokenism. We don't want that to be the case. We want deep, lasting cultural change here at St. Peter's. But what we've realized is we need to get better at communicating some of the small changes that we're making along the way so that we're all still got it in our minds, we're aware of it, and we're still acting as we go on. So please do speak to me if you have any concerns or if you have any ideas, please come and speak to me. My email is ben at stpetersbroccoli.org.uk or just chat to me after the service. I'd love to chat to you more about this. But why don't we just pray quickly and then we're going to have our reading and our talk. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the vision of church that we read about in the New Testament. Thank you, Jesus, for that beautiful picture of heaven where every tongue, every nation, every language, every culture comes together to worship you, to find you, Jesus, as our primary identity. Lord, I pray for us here at St. Peter's that you would help us to have our eyes open to see the things that are stopping that picture of heaven from happening, of dismantling the walls to that happening. Lord, that we would be aware of the parts that we play in stopping that from happen, happening, that we would repent, we'd be able to turn in the opposite direction, and we'd be able to play our part in bringing heaven to this church in this way. And we pray that we do this all in and through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.